Hello everyone, uh, thank you for joining me today. Uh, as, as you know, I'm traveling a lot and I just back from United States from my five days workshop. So I'm in my studio finally. And that's great because I miss my studio, my house and my family. So now I'm in my studio. And I will be here uh, around the 10 days. After the 10 days, the new trip started, uh, which is very exciting because I'm going to the Netherlands. Uh, I'm going to Germany and Belgium and France. So that, that's really cool. And also, uh, by the way, all the information about my trips, the workshops, all the events, what I hold, you can find on my website, watercolorline.com. Uh, if you want to follow me and for sure, if you want to join me, you will find all the information there. And uh, plus, in October, uh, it will be workshop in Portugal. Uh, you know, I was in Portugal many times. I like that country. One of the best wine, great quality coffee, one of the best. So seriously, and very friendly people. And normally, always, uh, when I was in Portugal, I'm painting the cityscapes. Um, I like the white buildings with the, you know, orange roofs, and it's look like it's made special for watercolor. So that I'm always enjoy to explain the lights on the street, especially the streets like that, with the stones on the ground with a beautiful reflection. So that always cool. And this time I want to invite you to make a trip in Portugal again, but this time it will be seascape. So we will paint the ocean with a little bit waves, with the rocks. The interesting point is that place what we will paint today, uh, and I can show you that place. So that's the place where we will be. And you know that that's the place where I will be in real physical plein air in October. So that's really look nice. And it's, you know, it's interesting to paint it from the video first, because it's not the photo, it's the video, you see that. So you can pick up the, uh, the right moment of the waves exactly like you want. And after that, we will be there in, in real. And for sure, the light will be different, the weather will be different, but the rocks and ocean, I hope still will be the same so it will be interesting game how to paint something from reality if you make it before from the video photos like that so that that should be interesting and um by the way during all the uh demo today uh you can just ask me any questions anytime just tape it in the chat because you see i have a technical support i couldn't see the chat but i can hear the chat and i can answer and that's way uh, we can communicate so, any questions, any time. And um, you know that book, this is my book, the second book about the watercolor. Here, by the way, we have a special lesson about the, the ocean and seascape step by step with all the explanation, uh, with all the materials. So if you want to train in yourself before going to the workshop with me in Portugal, we still have, a, if I'm right, three spots. So you still have a chance to join me. So you can train yourself following this and for sure you can follow me on this uh, demo. And for all the job, uh, we have a um, today, yeah, this is my studio palette, but today I want to make the limitation of the colors what I use. So that's why uh, I just switched to this uh, plate. It will be more visible for you which colors I'm mixing. And we need just uh, uh, these four guys, four colors for all that picture. Uh, by the way, yeah, that's the video right here on the screen. So it will be in front of your eyes. Uh, we need just one green. Uh, this is a phthalo green blue shade. Here is it. We need just one blue color, cobalt, just to make the colder reflection. It's, it will be nice. This is the cobalt blue. And two of my, let's say, primary colors. Uh, the Quinacridone Sienna and Indigo, that's the two colors what I'm using always. And for sure, all of them from the Daniel Smith. And all of them you can find in my set. Here is it. 
So that's the color that I'm using, and that, all of them, there. Okay, and uh, I have a Sanders Water Fort. This is a 15 by 15 inches paper, and uh, it's already wet inside. So uh, on the back side, I apply the water like 15 minutes before we start. So for now, it's full of water inside, but dry outside. And you know, for this job, we don't really need um, a sketch, so I start to paint directly. And for all the process, I will use just these two brushes. I believe that will be enough. The five lines and three lines. This is my main tools. So, let's go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you see, I use the uh, grayish mix. Uh, it's, it's just a cobalt and Queen Crown Sienna, which make for you a very nice grayish mix, which we use for the sky and beginning of our painting. So let's go to paint. Hello, Francois. Thank you for joining me today. Happy to see you. Hello, New Brunswick. Hello, Portugal. Yeah, I will be there soon. Hello, Finland. Hello, Germany. Hello, friends. Hello, Spain. Wow, we have a people from around the world. That's so cool. Hello, Rome. Wow. So I'm starting to make the dark reflection from the rocks here without rocks. The rocks we will create later, but I'm start from the reflections. So uh, my mix is pretty transparent and very delicate there. But inside the reflection is very greenish, so that's like a natural color of the water. But after that, I switch to the soft mix again. Uh, hello from Athens. Hey, hey, thank you for joining me today. Colorado, United States, welcome. Back to the grayish mix here. Later we create the waves, uh, and that's that will be interesting game. And plus, I will use the dry brush uh, for this a lot. So you see, it's a very soft green now. It's just a tallow green blue shade plus Queen Sienna make it very nice green, soft, warm. So that's look good. Hello, hey, North Carolina, welcome. Hello, India.
So it's very, very important to play with the reflection uh, right now because I want to make it soft and it should be blended with my layer itself in a natural way. Yes, uh, the great question for sure. For the, all the workshops, you will have my supply list, absolutely. I can tell you more. A lot of materials I'll bring with me to the workshops, like my brushes set, some paints, and yeah, because some special effects and some part of my style can be done just with my tools, which is just more comfortable. So you will have all of that and supply list for sure, absolutely. Oh yeah, uh, thank you for the question about the washout. The lifting washout is one of the main uh, part of my style. You see, that's exactly what I'm doing now. So without washout, I couldn't make that softness and the gradients. Look at that, it's just, it just works itself. Hello, Holland. Hello, Quebec. For now, it's a, a very complicated mix, grayish again with the indigo in the in the base. But you see, it's just four colors only. Uh, the question is the variations, and that's make it look interesting and different. Hello London, welcome. Hello Wisconsin. So we're back to the washout, you know, that, that process never stops. We put the colors and we take it off all the time. That's how it works together. Hello, Lisbon. softly going to the create the something like a foam there and uh, I'll always I have to back to the washout because the pigments moving and what is done just gone so I back to that And now I'm going to the ground. So the basic mix for the ground will be Quinacridone Sienna plus Indigo, which make brownish color, very nice, this. So this is my main brown color, by the way, what I'm using when I'm painting normally. I add just a little bit cobalt inside to make it softly. And that's start. The Fabriano, hey! Thank you for joining the beautiful city. Hello Manila. So you see I'm starting to use like a negative space to build the shape of my waves here.
and it's it's important I blend all the area for now to be able to play inside so I just cover that with the colors and after that slowly starting to build the, this border so idea is the same as I'm gonna use somewhere wash out somewhere I add more pigments it's gonna be like a like a game to more darker strokes I use the just indigo and green sienna together we have a 95 people 85 people great uh, thank you very much for joining me today and if you don't mind please give us a like because that helps to other people to find that video so I'm starting to use the pretty dark touch in here to make the my contrast and make it visible and it's important to build the interesting shape of the ocean plus somewhere I still wash out it's like you know the water going out and that's look nice and plus it's make the good connection and relationship between my my ocean and the ground And you see this still wet so I can back to that to build the shape what I need. And it's funny we have a reflection from the ghost you see I'm still not painting the, the rocks but we have a shadow from that and reflection that's interesting. And to make the feeling of the wet sand here I just take off the pigments. And for all the people who now on the Facebook or Instagram, you have a chance to join me on the YouTube channel because this is the live streaming right now in my studio. You have to be very delicate and you starting to take off the pigments. So by this way you can build any shape as you want and because the, the blend is pretty soft it always will be look natural. Hello Venice! That's really beautiful city. And uh, I'm really look forward to my visit in Portugal, especially because the weather, it will be October, the weather will be very nice because it not will be so hot and it will be very comfortable for the plein air and you know we're working in the studio and the plein air as well and that's really really comfortable to be outside in that part of the year. Let's make this more interesting and complicated plus I just you know drop a little bit water here and for now it's visible but in the few minutes it's gonna be blended will be almost nothing but it still makes some variation of the colors and just a little bit blue colors here with a cobalt to make the fresh water filling reflection Okay, and we go into that part slowly again. Yeah, for the washout, uh, that's the brilliant question. Uh, you know, 
that's the point uh, I'm use uh, I'm put the colors and take it off in the same moment it's not a separated process so it's never stop we put the colors take it off so it have to be really really fresh if we want to make the washout because in the few minutes it will be too late and you couldn't do that just make soft connection and I have to back to my dark mix I need the counter somewhere before we go up So I just prepared here, uh, using again washout, prepare uh, the lights for my future rocks, which we paint later. And for now, I have to stop uh, the blending process here on top. Uh, I have to use the hair dryer for that. So I make that part dry and we are starting to paint our rocks. So my paper here on top is pretty dry, I can apply the second layer, here is still wet, that's why uh, I can spray it a little bit more to make it look nicer. So we really use the texture of the water there. That's good. So we go into the big rocks, for this again the main mix will be between the cobalt uh, indigo and queen sienna all together and uh, look carefully the, the tricks how to make that the rocks alive and with the light and still keep it like it like a dark stuff so for example let's let's make that guy first <laughs> Hello Agnieszka, thank you for joining me today. I hope I will see you soon in real. By the way, uh, today I, I checked the uh, email and saw your beautiful watercolor, what you make the step by step, following the step by step course. That's a great job, thank you. So you see, I make the pretty dark uh, spot there, but now I take off the pigments like this and make the light. So by this way we can can build a 3D shape. Hello Connecticut. Hello, Kashmir. I uh, know that's the, the good the good question about the, uh, what happens with my paper if I use the hair dryer. No, it's still full of water inside. I can feel it, and I'm touching. So it's a pretty still pretty comfortable to mix the pigments there. It's not drying fast.
we have a 110 people thank you very much for joining me today and if you don't mind please give us a like because that help uh, other people to find that video so i'm going to the second one uh the the rules is the same so i create the first i create the shape and after that starting to take off the pigments to bring the lights but you know it's under control so i can back to that to add the dark touching if i need any time that happens because inside my my paper is still full of water so i have a time to play with all the things and you see i use that uh, brushes flat brushes for this uh you know it's kind of cheating honestly uh, because uh, for these small shapes uh, this brush not easy to control but that make my strokes really natural and look like a uh, loose but it's just because it's brush make it itself that's the point Okay, that's the good question about the, <laughs> the red colors what I do not use in my palette. That's simple. They are not transparent. Uh, all what I'm using is 100% transparent pigments. That, that's why uh, it doesn't matter how many uh, colors I mix together. In the end, I have a always nice uh, mix. So if I add just one pack guy, I will lose that good feeling of the transparency of nice mixes and I have to think which colors I can mix, which I couldn't. So it's, it's that's make the process very complicated. So that's why there is no pack colors in my palette. But itself, the colors is very nice. It's just not great for mixing, for my feeling, for sure. I wet the back side of the paper. Yeah, I see the question. Uh, because you see, uh, I'm touching that and it's still wet so i can back to that any time to make a correction if i do not wet the back side of my paper it's drying much faster and i couldn't control it so that's the reason so it's just give me more time to play with my pigments no rush you know it's very comfortable You know, sometimes the preparing uh, your materials, your paper, for the painting takes more time than the painting itself. Uh, yeah, thank you for the great question about stainless pigments. Uh, you know, that's the, the point. Normally, the tau pigments, for instance, uh, it's very stable, stunning. It's, it's impossible to wash out, except the pigments from the Daniel Smith. So all of them, yeah, it's possible to lift in, to take off the pigments. And it, for, for me, they make like a revolution to make the tau pigments, which is very concentrated, bright, nice, possible to wash out so that's why i'm just stuck on that and it's i really love them so yeah all the pigments not stunning We just take off a little bit more pigments here to make the feeling of the distance. That's good. Add a little bit more contrast on the bottom.
we just make soft connection uh, with the clear water somewhere and I switch to the big brush again and we're gonna create some rocks here uh, what we have on the first line I use a dry brush for that and wash out for sure a little bit more brownish colors inside and we have a nice shadow from the rocks here and I definitely want to do them. That will be my next step of after I finish it, all that things here. You know, it's it's really nice to make the the painting without sketching by pencil first because I'm really flexible to create everything what I need. I can move my rocks if, because the paper is wet inside. I can erase everything and repaint if I don't like it. So that's that's really cool. It's very life process. Just taking off pigments, I can explain the direction of the light, which is important. And the first light is here, here still wet paper, but dry enough to build the shape. Yeah, it's thank you for the question about the studio palette. Yes, that's the good decision because the uh, neutral tint I'm not honestly used for mixing my my colors. Uh, normally no, that but the tall blue turquoise it's a brilliant color and yep, it's a good decision. You know, it's in, anyway it's very personal. It depends what mixes uh, you prefer or what colors you like more or less. But the Talo Blue Turquoise is definitely a great guy. And if you have in your palette Indigo, that's enough for uh, basic mixes anyway. So I just, again, spray it for now. But look, uh, in the few minutes it's going to blend. I have to back to that to spray it again to make the texture of the stones more visible. Like here. Yeah, yes, yes. You see, th this is it's not visible on the screen. Uh, I use my uh, masking tape. It's it's in the black color with a very strong glue, uh, and that's made special for watercolor. You know, it's the first tape what I create myself special for watercolor. First of all, the black tape uh, it's look like it's already framed. I don't see the any lines except just uh, my painting. 
only this, only my paper. So it's a pretty comfortable. And <clears throat> um, I'm tape it uh, to uh, fix the, the paper and keep it flat all during all the process. Thank you, Mark, for your kind words. I appreciate it. So I add some more touching on the rocks here, just to take off the pigments. So you see that that's the process what I'm always doing. I put more darker pigments when I want to see in the end, and after that, starting to take it off, which make the very soft gradient and blending, and it looks so alive and natural. <laughs> that's great so Agnieszka you, you know that place that's cool so again I just spray it a little bit just by clear water and a few more dark touching there before I'm starting to create the, the shadows So what I'm going to do now, uh, I don't want to wait, because normally uh, it will be better if I wait a few more minutes and continue to play with the stones, but I want to save your time. So I'm starting to dry it, but not completely, just a little bit and back to the spray it again. So you will see how it works. So the last point what I want to, to do, beautiful shadows what we have uh, from the rocks, uh, bluish on the sand, which make a good feeling of the light and mostly it will be just a cobalt here with a little bit green sienna, a little bit indigo to make it just as softly. So it's a pretty cool mix and we apply that on top of what we already have here. And I touch my rocks as well. Okay, the question about my brush. Uh, you know, on my YouTube channel you will find the full video for free and explain everything about my brush. The difference is, you know, this is a very strong hair, it's like a synthetic, but synthetic brush always uh, make for you perfect rectangle, because it's just synthetic cut uh, hair. This is a natural gold, but it's not a regular gold, it's very strong hair, and that makes a huge difference. You know, you couldn't uh, take off the pigments from your paper, like use a lifting wash out, using the uh, gold brush. Uh, this one it works so that's the difference but you can you can check the video uh, you will find all the answers right there yes that's right that's right it will be like that and I like it it's a look at, make it look fresh I like how it looks like
for the people who miss I see the question who missed the beginning no 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 the front side was dry in the beginning that's why I can use a dry bar strokes everywhere so that was the reason but the back side of my paper was pretty wet and as you can see uh, all the painting was made by uh, these two guys and just in the end for the uh, small rocks here on the beach I will switch to the calligraphy brush this is my <coughs> one of my main tools it's a traditional uh, Chinese calligraphy brush so just a few more touching here Okay, Sabine, uh, I hope you will like that brushes, uh, and thank you for the order. You know, you will find that brushes for now in the hands of uh, a lot of top-level artists. A lot of them using this because it's it's really, really unique tool, nothing to compare. So I hope you really like that. Mm. Okay, I got the question how I wet the backside. I'm just use the brush, uh, the regular way, just uh, apply the water again and again, and I keep my paper shiny on the backside at least 15 minutes before I start to paint. So just a few more touching here to make the lights more visible. And a little bit more game with the, with the waves and reflection, just to make it more rich, let's say. So I will back to my flat five lines brush. That's the last touch and I believe we will finish it in the few minutes. But I believe that's last touch and make it more interesting. So from one side I create the shape, from the second side I use just the water to blend it. So make it just look better it's it's always question of the contrast you know and talking about the brush you see that brush <coughs> uh, can be very pointy look it's it's a sharp like a knife and be flat and sharp again so that's why I can take uh, create the very tiny lines here and wash out with the tiny lines as well so that's perfect combination yes that that's right it's 140 uh, of paper so that means 300 grams that's right Saunders with the Ford extra white rough just a little bit more details on the rocks So we're almost done. I just add the last reflection a little bit here because for my feeling it's too empty. Let's add something there. And just the water. yeah uh, <laughs> you're very attentive it's a good question yes sometimes you see if i need to create the nice gradient uh because the brush is flat that's exactly what i can do i will show you just a second so what i can do look i take two colors together so I can create the gradient just like this. 
so it, it, it works perfectly. If I don't need it, I just can blend it like that, but sometimes it's very nice if it works like that. So the gradient coming in the natural way, just in few touching. So that saves uh, a lot of time for me. Uh, uh, thank you for uh, the question about the Diachrome uh, paint. Uh, no, <laughs> no, I don't use them. Uh, you know, I use sometimes a very specific uh, paint for the, some special job, uh, but the Diachrome uh, paint again, it's not transparent. And this is the main thing what is important for me. It should be transparent. So that's why, unfortunately, it's not part of my palette. I like the colors itself special for the sun decorative things and yeah it's great but for regular color mixing no for my feeling it's not a good idea again it's just very personal so i believe we can stop on that uh, <clears throat> i don't want to create the horizon line uh, i i like that misty feeling like it's the ocean going to the uh, to the nowhere and I, I hope uh, I will see that in real and uh, I, I'm pretty sure I will enjoy that place. But just imagine, you will see what you did before in the different light, in the different weather, in different time of the year. So it's always exciting. And again, if you have a chance to join me, we still have a three spots in my workshop in Portugal in October. So we go into that place and we work in the studio. Uh, because it will be a lot of uh, materials. Uh, uh, I will show you all my tricks for sure. Uh, so how to use washout, how to prepare your paper. We will talk about the colors, which is very important, how to mix the colors in the right way. Uh, because mostly what we use in uh, its tradition is coming from oil to the watercolor, which is not right. We have a lot of tricks how to represent the transparency and keep the transparency. So we will talk about the perspective for the landscapes, which is not regular stuff. So how to explain the distance, which tricks we can use for that. So it will be a lot of materials and definitely will be a very interesting workshop. And thank you very much for your time, what you spent with me today. If you have any questions uh, after that video, after the uh, live streaming, you just can uh, ask me uh, in the text, in the message after the video. I will find the uh, time to answer on that. Thank you very much again and enjoy your day. See you next Monday. Bye-bye.